All right, everyone. So what we've been doing on the previous days, um, we've been doing all of that setup, setting up Eclipse, setting up virtual devices, etc. Last week, we actually started to do some work uh, with uh, PhoneGap. Remember, PhoneGap is the, is the template that allows us to convert our HTML project into an Android project. And we were using uh, PhoneGap 2.90 even though 2.91 was available to download. And as I said, uh, in my experience, 2.91 seemed to be broken, and I don't think they're going to fix it because they're already on 3.6. Now, I haven't checked if there's a 3.7 now because Android 5.0 came out. I think it's too soon, though, but uh, to my knowledge, they're on PhoneGap 3.6 at the moment. So we're like a year behind in our, in our, in our PhoneGap template. And uh, at this point, what we're going to do is look at sheets 6 and 7, which are uh, talking about how do you set up the new generation of PhoneGap, also known as Cordova. And uh, we're going to use the terms Cordova and PhoneGap interchangeably a lot of times, and technically they're not. Um, they all come from, the, from an original trunk of code, but then they branched off in that PhoneGap is the one that Adobe is behind. And uh, they're t they've tied PhoneGap into their build system, which is that basically you provide your code to Adobe Build, and they will convert it into the appropriate uh, Android uh, software, iPhone software, BlackBerry software, Windows Phone software, etc., for a fee. That part's not free. Uh, the other branch of that is the is the straight Cordova branch which is uh, the open source one run by the Apache Software Foundation, uh, and that's the one we're going to use at the moment. So ever since they went from their 2.x branch to the 3.x branch, they've gone a lot more to command line world. So we're going to be using the command line a lot at the moment. Uh, we're going to need to set up our project via command line, and then we can bring it into Eclipse and use it in this familiar environment. But you could use completely the command line from beginning to end from now on. Uh, and a lot of us, even if we have experience in it, it can be a pain sometimes. It's nicer to click a button once in a while and get it done instead of typing a command, even if you've got them all memorized. So uh, we're going to look at sheet number six. Uh, I'm going to minimize Eclipse for the moment and go to a web browser. Let's go to the web. And the very first thing we want to do is uh, let's go up to... Um, Let's go to uh, cordova.apache.org. Yes. No, not yet. No. Yeah, we'll be right back to that in one moment. So cordova.apache.org. So Apache is a big, famous... Uh, organization that deals with a lot of uh, free software, open source software out in the world. Uh, there's a lot of projects that are something.apache.org. And when Apache is behind something, it's pretty important because uh, for a long time, if not still, it's uh, Apache, the Apache web server software was running like 90% of all the websites in the world. Now there's a lot of competition with uh, Nginx and other things, but uh, Apache is a big name in the world of the web. And so uh, they've uh, taken up the mantle to make Cordova an important project, which is the uh, more open version of PhoneGap. So once again, PhoneGap, Cordova, I'll use it interchangeably. Technically, they're different. But uh, here, we are, here we are at Apache uh, Cordova is a platform to build native mobile applications using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, just like PhoneGap. Oh, and they did upgrade it to 4.0, actually. I just noticed it right now. So. I guess we'll get the latest one. Uh, we want to, of course, read the documentation of what's new before jumping into new software. But anyway, what it is is a set of device APIs. We, we know all of this from, from PhoneGap. But the big difference is, well, how do you use the new, uh, how do you use the new software? It's command line based. So at the top, there's a download button, jumps you all the way down. And basically it says, it is recommended that the Cordova command line interface be installed from NPM rather than downloading this zip version. 
For more information on installing the NPM version, see the command line interface section of the documentation. So right away it jumps you into, okay, you're going to use the command line in NPM. How many of you have ever heard of NPM before today? Two, three people or so, four people. So um, basically NPM is the node package manager. So Node.js is, is an up-and-coming, very popular, powerful uh, framework to do uh, web development. So in order to use Cordova or even PhoneGap, let's say we went running back to PhoneGap, we still need to do it via command line. Because FYI, if we go to PhoneGap.com, at the very top it also tells you to install PhoneGap, do it the command line way. So things have changed. So they're both uh, basically saying you're going to need Node.js. So let me back up then to my sheet number six at the top. Node.js allows us to use Cordova, also known as PhoneGap. Cordova allows us to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and have the code translated to the appropriate platform's native code. Node.js will let us update Cordova and add plugins. Remember what I said last time that when we were playing with the camera, remember we made our app take a photo, uh, I had said that there are permissions. Uh, by default, with uh, PhoneGap and Cordova 2x, all the permissions are turned on. So you can access the camera, you can access GPS, you can access everything. And now with the 3x branch, nothing is turned on. You have to turn it on manually by writing some code. So I've got it all on my sheets here. But here's what we need to do. Let's go over to Node js.org Node.js is available for Mac, Windows, Linux, all the platforms. Node.js is a platform built on Chrome's JavaScript runtime for easily building fast, scalable network apps. Node.js uses an event-driven, non-blocking I.O. model that makes it lightweight and effective, perfect for data-intensive, real-time applications that run across distributed devices. So, um, for example, you can create a web server with a very little amount of code. That right there will create a web server. You run it from the command line, now you've got a web server. So then you can sell, start installing stuff onto it, like CouchDB and other cool stuff. So this is its own um, huge can of worms. But all we really need is to install Node.js. But wait a minute, it's already installed on these computers. So you don't need to do it here, but you need to do it at home. And the installation file is simply, you know, you click install. Don't click install. But you would click install at home, and it should detect the appropriate file for you to download. It saw that I've got, you know, the 64-bit CPU, so that's what it served me. Uh, you could go into downloads and choose if you're on Mac or what to do if you're on Linux, etc. 32-bit versions, everything. So at home, according to my instructions, you go to that website, you go to downloads. I have here version 0 0.10.32, but it, and they're still on 32. Good, they haven't updated that. Uh, you install it, it does have an installer, you, you set it all up, and then what you get is um, this automatically adds should add itself to your path. Remember we've talked about previously when you install Java and uh, Apache Ant, you need to set your path, uh, which I have in my instructions, sheet one. Uh, Node.js already installs itself, or should, should have already installed itself to your path. So that means you can you can type node commands right away without uh, much trouble. And in the start menu now, we should have a new entry that says we've got node installed. So as I said, this is already done for us. Let's fire it up. Let's go to the start menu, and let's start typing node. You should type node, and do you see an entry that says uh, node um, a command prompt? You guys see that? Oops, I don't see it on mine. Okay, we'll see what happens here. 
So click on your node command prompt. <coughs> And I've got a little section here to make sure this is all working because there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle. So here we are in the command line. I'm on sheet number six in the little section that says confirm all the software is installed. We're going to write a little bit of command line uh, in the command line just to see it's all working. So first of all, here in the code, I'm going to say, well, what version of Java do we have? Remember, we did this previously. We type Java space dash version. So this says we've got 1.8.011, and I think there's a newer version. Uh, there's version 20 or so. So okay, not 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 too much of a problem. Uh, we're a little behind, but no no problem. So then we'll check. Uh, then we'll type ant dash version. Ant space dash version, and that says it's uh, Apache Ant version 1.94. And then here, we want to type node-v. Mine says uh, version uh, 0 0.10.30. And lastly, I know. This software was added several months ago to these computers. They're not going to update it every time a new version is out. So, yeah, we're a little behind on our software here, but we should still be able to do what we need. Then we'll type npm-v, and we've got 1.4.2.1, and a uh, newer version perhaps is out, 1.4.2.8. So did everyone get a version number returned if you got errors and stuff? Um, that's a problem. So anyone get any errors? Question? Okay. Yeah, so I would recommend use our computers first so that you don't fall behind, and then uh, during the breaks you can set up your own computer. Ever over here? All right, so this is just to check if we've got the software installed, which we do. I was worried for a second that my instructor's computer didn't say note JS command prompt like you guys, but still works, which is good. Um, so if you were uh, if you were at home, and again, you don't need to do this here. We've already uh, got it set up, but at home. We've got, um, okay, so jumping down, like I said, we've already done this for you, but here's other things that, that need to be accomplished. So on the section, this is Cordova 3.6 command line, line interface, CLI. Uh, um, it says basically, okay, sh uh, step one, you go to Cordova.apache. As of this writing, it's 3.63, but we just saw there's a 4.0 that just came out. And we, we do want to download a specific file, and this is the thing. Maybe they fixed it on 4.0, because I've been seeing these issues. We're going to see that, honestly, yes, it is harder. And the last week, we downloaded the zip file, and we just used it. That's it. But now, we're going to need to write some code. And we're going to need to download some extra files and import more files and such, and it is harder. Uh, maybe with the 4.0, which I haven't tested yet, maybe it's easier. I don't know. But here, I've got it all written out. I've tested this on various computers, and it works. So what I'm saying in my second section here is, uh, okay, step uh, four, we would go to Cordova, uh, we would go to cordova.apache.org, and we would download 
a specific file. For some reason, when I was setting this up, the only version of the code of the of the archive to download was a TGZ file, which is a kind of a zip file, but not really. So then most computers don't have a way to unzip that TGZ file. So that's why I wrote on number five, download 7-zip, and that'll do it. So I don't know, why, why did they not provide a plain old zip file like they've always done? Maybe in 4.0 they do. But what I've done for us, actually, I've done this for us. I've provided a zip version for us in the network folder. Uh, so we'll actually we'll need a copy of that. That one isn't set up on our computers. So let's uh, let's go to the desktop and open up a computer window. And let's go to the Z drive. Classroom Z drive and go to Campus Android 2 and there you'll see Cordova-android-3.63.zip. Just copy that to your desktop. Get a copy of that onto your desktop. That is not the complete template that we've been used to from last week. This is a piece that seems to be missing once we actually open up our project in Eclipse from the command line. It's weird. Well, it'll make sense when, once we do it. But copy that over. It's a zip file. So what you can do is, after you've copied it to the desktop, right-click it, extract all, and I'll leave the default, which is it will extract the folder called Cordova Android 363 onto my desktop. That's fine. The default is fine. Click Extract. And so it created a new folder on my desktop with that name. It's unzipped. And then it's got some files that we need a little later. All right, so did everyone get that unzipped folder onto your desktop? Okay, back to that command prompt. And we've already done this, but my step number eight says to type <coughs> npm install dash g Cordova. And that's going to connect to cordova.apache.org and download all of the, the current uh, Cordova files, the template, uh, and then it's going to... Um, allow us to create our projects. So just to confirm here, back on the command prompt, let's type cordova-v. Okay, see, it's not installed. Hmm. Well, we'll do it right now then. Or did you guys get a, a, a version number? You guys got a version number? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let me install it then. npm install, and this is on my handout sheet uh, number 8. Dash G Cordova. So I'm guess I'm gonna get 4.0. You guys will have 3.6. Would that conflict with the zip file that we're working on? Probably. We'll see what happens. What's that? Well, uh, there is. We just saw earlier today that there is a Cordova 4.0. They just released it. You guys have 3.63. Right now I'm installing the latest version. So the zip file I just gave you is 3.63, and I'm about to download 4.0. You can probably download an older version. For yours? Yes, I know, but what I'm saying, I don't even have it installed on mine, so I'm going to need to install. Say that again? No. So I should have tested this before class, but let's see, here we go. 
So this is what you would be seeing at home. You're going to install it. The command line is going to give you some feedback that stuff got installed. And then I'll check it now. Cordova dash V. Hmm. Maybe my path isn't right.